Hey, what's up guys? So today I have yet another free Photoshop action for you. And this one is sort of based on actions that we have uh, on our website. Go check them out, please. We welcome you to check those out because they're all affordable, very, very powerful and do things that most people's actions don't do. I promise you that. But today's action, I'm going to run it, walk you through it, and then give you some examples on other shots on how, you know, why I made it and how maybe it could benefit you. So the idea here is, let's say you have a shot like this one I did almost 10 years ago now um, in South Beach in Miami. And I like it, but it was overcast. It's not super high contrast. It doesn't have a ton of color, but it's nice. I love the shot, but let's say I wanna wake it up. And so the first thing you might think is contrast, cool. Other thing you might think is, um, you know, uh, some saturation boost maybe, um, or just some color grading. All of that is valid. But sometimes we need to kind of wake it up in a, not necessarily an automatic way, but a way that's a, a, a proper method of waking it up in a smarter way. This isn't, of course, like any action, it's not a, a magic bullet for every single image, but when you have a softer shot or a shot that you want to add some something to, some dynamics to, this is a good start. So it's called MBP Auto Harmony Contrast Color Boost, which is not completely accurate, but let's go ahead and run it and then walk you through it. All right, so there it goes. Very, very fast, already done. Now. True to MVP actions, anything that I design, it starts usually pretty basic, pretty soft, and then you can enhance that. You can increase the, the opacity, and in this case, the fill. I wanna explain that first. All right, so the whole thing is put together with the hard mix blend mode on the folder containing these two colors, which I'll explain the colors in a minute, okay? And hard mix looks absolutely disastrous uh, when the fill is at 100%, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and show you. There's hard mix at 100%. Hard mix pretty much anything beyond like 10, 20, or 30% at the, at the absolute most usually doesn't look right. So let's go ahead and put it on 25. There it is. That's 25% fill, not opacity. Now, opacity has its use as well. So if you have a really strong fill, let's go ahead and push it at 30. And then you scale back the opacity. Sometimes that can get you the look that you might be after, okay? But let's go ahead and put it back to the default. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put it at 25. It's a pretty soft shot. But let's explain these colors. The first color down here, okay, it is created using the Photoshop filter average. It takes the average of the entire image. When you know, we duplicate the image, we take the average, and then we boost the color saturation of that average color to maximum. Then we duplicate that color and we invert it creating the, you know, in, in sense of color harmony, we've created the exact opposite, 180 degree shift and invert. And therefore we have, you know, a nice complementary color. Now, the original one that's set up is focused. This is the original average color. It's focused on the low end, low, sh you know, the low luminosity using blend if, and the other one is set focused on the high end using blend if, okay? Both are set to color blend mode. All right, just to kind of minimize any kind of, you know, we don't want any luminosity getting involved in our in our color wash, right? The shadows toner, which is usually going to show up stronger, is set to default opacity of 50. The highlights toner is set to 75% opacity um, because it's just not as strong. Now, you can make that 50%. You can see how now the shadow sticks out a little bit more. Make the shadow color 75%. Make both 75%. Okay, make it even 100% shadow and 100%, excuse me, 100% highlight, 100% shadow. Now, what, what's happening here? Okay, so what's happening with the nature of the mathematics here is that we're toning the shadows, if you will, uh, with the average of the image. It's just a good base color based on the image, of course, itself. And then we do a color wash over that. We've done this a lot in this channel. Then we take the inverse of it for the highlights, creating an automatic harmony. It's a basic harmony, but it often works, okay? Put them both on color, take both of them, and put it on hard mix. Hard mix, kind of hard to describe what it does, but it adds contrast, it boosts a little bit of color, um, and but you have to do it you know, sparingly because that fill setting, like I said, at 100% or even close, is usually a disaster. But all this comes together to add a contrast boost, okay, and a type of, uh, of, of like dehaze effect, if you will, using harmonious colors from the image itself based on the averages. Again, I want to make it clear, it's not a magic bullet for every image. Some images, this will probably start as a total disaster and you might be able to adjust it and make it look nice. Other times you just try it and then delete it because it doesn't work for that image. But as you can see here, you didn't even realize, I certainly didn't, how hazy and sort of soft and overcast this image necessarily was until I ran this. Now I woke it up, it almost looks like a sunny day. 
And yeah, you can do this manually with contrast, manually with saturation, manually with other tools, but this is a good start using the average colors of the image to create a type of harmony that then you boost contrast and saturation with, okay? And that's why I think it sort of wakes it up. Now, when you zoom it out and turn it on and off, it really kind of tells the story. Off, on, off, on. You also have to decide what, how much contrast is too much for you, right? It could be something that doesn't work for you. Let's try this one. Hazy, decent color. Let's see what happens. All right, kind of woke it up. That's kind of cool. See the average colors that it found? Okay, very muted in that case. All right, let's go ahead and put that one maybe 70%. Okay, and we'll take our highlight color, make it even stronger. Cool. Don't forget, by the way, that if you double click the right side of the layer, you can change the blend diff. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can make it a little wider, a little, you know, uh, more into the deeper luminosity range or less. You can play around with that too. Of course, your first line of defense is going to be opacity. So if I take the opacity of the orange color, maybe a little less, how about 55%? And I'm going to take the fill and maybe make it 20%. Woke that right up using its own sort of, like I said, harmonious colors that it already has. Maybe 60%. Yeah, that looks kind of good. Woke that right up. Now, how you tweak it from there, like, you know, if you like this and go, yeah, but uh, I want to change a couple of things, go for it. Do whatever it is you're going to do underneath it. I don't know. Here's a selective color. Let's go to blacks and uh, put on relative here. And let's roll out some of the magenta and make it greener. There we go. Who knows what you can do, but it went from kind of hazy to popping, right? Because you, you did a smart contrast and saturation um, modification. All right, let's look at this one. Once again, um, this one's in California, Huntington Beach. Um, it's a sunny day, but she was, of course, under the pier. So it's super, super soft, low saturation. But let's see what happens. Okay, woke it right up from there to there. Very subtle, very subtle. Uh, let's see about our shadow color. May make that 60%, a little stronger. I'm going to make our highlight color about 85%. Crucially now, the fill. Let's see what happens at 25, okay? From there to there, there to there. See that? Woke it right up. There's all kinds of tonal contrast happening. When I increase the contrast using the mathematics of this setup, I'm also washing over again those harmonious colors. Now, harmony, color harmony, color theory is all a thing that you might have your own opinions on, your own philosophies and approaches on, and that's good. This is not, again, the magic bullet. It's just a good start. Often when I run an action like this or do this process, I'll go, okay, I've woken it up, that works pretty good. And again, remember, if you have a high fill, like a 30% and it's super strong, but you like everything that's happening, but it's a little strong, how about 70% or something like that, or 65% opacity now? And then you take the shot from flat and hazy and you've woken it right up, maybe a little stronger, you've woken it right up, and then you can continue your work. But again, it's just a, a way, you know how I make a lot of tools, uh, actions especially, uh, that just kind of do something that maybe I didn't expect or at least give me a start. Like, do I don't know what the image needs. It feels a little faded. What can I do? You run this action, cool things start happening, and then you start playing around with it. Let's make this like a 60%. Let's make the highlight maximum. And let's go ahead and make, there you go, from there to there. This one already has is a, a final image, so it has some color grading on it. So I already had a little bit of cyan in the highlights, as is my way. All right, but the average colors that it found added cyan to the highlights while adding contrast. Now that shot, I wanted it to be hazy, but let's say you didn't, the action works kind of good. Here's a shot that's pretty high contrast. Let's see what happens here. Okay, cool, woke it right up. Seems to have found an average of green and purple, which is interesting. It's just Photoshop's average engine, if you will, uh, kind of doing that. So what happens if we put that like 60%? How about 75%? Interesting. And then the purple highlight to about 100, went from there to there, woke that right up. I think a fill of 20 could be cool. See, look at that. It almost like a, it does a dehaze effect, like I said, and very subtly using the color harmony, the average tones and the inverse harmony to create some kind of depth to it. And again, how much is too much is up to you. There's 100%. It adds a little bit of a green tone into the, um, you know, sort of the shadow areas and overall in general. That looks kind of cool. I don't know. It looks kind of cool. Kind of woke it up. I would never expect it in a million years to do a green and a purple wash over this image, but I feel like it definitely woke it right up. Let's come back to this one and run it again. Put that fill at like 25. You can see off on wakes it right up with some contrast that one of course woken right up with some contrast this one as well 
Anyway, it's just a fun little action, like I said, based on some processes that I do quite a bit. Um, and you guys can download it below. NBP, Auto Harmony, Contrast, Color, Boost. Give it a go. Don't forget the different settings, like I said, the uh, opacity of the actual average colors that it finds. Definitely um, play with those until you get something that you might like. Don't forget Blend If can also be adjusted, though almost certainly you probably don't need to. And on the folder, because it's set on hard mix, you want to mess with fill first. And too much fill will be a disaster very, very quickly. Guaranteed you're going to be between 5% and 25% most of the time. And then of course, if you like the look and want to scale it back, don't forget opacity. But as you can see, it takes a shot. That one really worked well. Hazy, blue, overcast, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Boom. Now it looks almost like a sunny day. Skin tones are popping. The hazy sky is never going to be electric blue on this day, but at least it has some toning. So try that action out. Let me know what you think. Any other requests or questions, leave them below.